Sawdust is one of the most debated soil amendments in gardening. Some folks swear it ruins gardens by locking up nitrogen and starving crops. Others claim it's a miracle mulch that suppresses weeds, feeds microbes, and builds long-lasting soil structure. The truth, well, it lies somewhere in between, and the answer depends on how it's used. Sawdust is abundant, often free, and rich in carbon, but like any powerful material, it can either damage or heal your soil depending on the strategy. In this guide, we'll cut through the myths, explore what really happens when sawdust hits the soil, and share exactly how to use it so it strengthens your garden instead of sabotaging it. To understand whether sawdust is friend or foe, we need to examine what it's made of. Sawdust is essentially finely shredded wood, with a high carbon-to-nitrogen ratio, often around 400 to 1 or more. Soil microbes thrive on carbon but in order to break it down they also need nitrogen. If the nitrogen isn't present in the sawdust itself, microbes pull it directly from the soil, and this my friends is where the nitrogen lockup problem begins. If sawdust is mixed into garden beds raw and uncomposted, it can create a temporary nitrogen deficiency. Plants turn pale, growth slows, and soil seems lifeless. But that's not the whole story. Once decomposition stabilizes, the soil is left with humus-rich organic matter that improves aeration, moisture retention, and microbial life. In other words, misused sawdust causes short-term harm, but properly managed sawdust can heal soil in ways few materials can. When applied to the surface as a mulch, sawdust behaves differently than when it's tilled into the soil. A layer of sawdust mulch suppresses weeds effectively because it blocks sunlight and forms a protective cover. It slows evaporation, keeping soil moist, and shields microbial communities from extreme heat. In this role, sawdust looks like a win. The risk comes when the mulch is too thick or not balanced with nitrogen. A deep mat of sawdust can compact, shed water, and act almost like a dry crust. When fresh sawdust is applied directly around nitrogen-hungry crops like corn, lettuce, or brassicas, the microbes decomposing the lower layer may still rob nitrogen from the root zone. This explains why some gardeners see stunted plants after mulching with sawdust, while others praise it as a soil-building powerhouse. The greatest strength of sawdust is its staying power. Unlike grass clippings or soft green mulches that decompose in weeks, sawdust breaks down slowly over months or even years. This means it contributes to long-term soil building, gradually transforming into stable organic matter that resists erosion and feeds microbes. As it decomposes, sawdust enhances soil tilth, heavy clay loosens, sandy soil gains more sponge-like properties, and compacted beds begin to breathe again. When integrated with manures, compost, or other nitrogen sources, sawdust helps lock those nutrients into the soil food web instead of letting them leach away. In orchards, berry rows, and perennial beds, this slow transformation is especially valuable because it creates a self-renewing mulch layer that feeds soil without constant replacement. The most effective way to avoid the nitrogen drain problem is to compost sawdust before applying it. By mixing sawdust with manure, green clippings, or kitchen scraps, you provide the nitrogen microbes need while balancing the carbon load. Over several months, the pile heats, cools, and matures into dark, crumbly compost. When sawdust is composted properly, its carbon-to-nitrogen ratio drops to a plant-friendly balance. Instead of robbing nitrogen, it delivers it. This composted sawdust becomes one of the best soil conditioners you can find moisture-retentive, microbe-rich, and stable enough to last for years. Many farmers have historically relied on sawdust manure mixes, especially in regions where wood processing creates a steady supply. Not every gardener has the time or space to compost sawdust. The good news is, even raw sawdust can be used safely if handled carefully. For pathways, sawdust works beautifully as a mulch because nitrogen lockup in the soil is irrelevant. There are no plants competing in the walkways. Over time, the decomposed sawdust in the paths can be shoveled into beds as organic matter once it is aged. For mulching perennials like fruit trees, sawdust can be applied around the drip line provided it isn't piled against the trunk. Here, its slow decay actually works in your favor suppressing weeds and holding moisture, 
while the roots benefit from gradual soil improvement. To protect nearby soil nitrogen, it's wise to sprinkle a thin layer of compost manure or even diluted urine under the sawdust. This creates a balanced system where decomposition accelerates without starving the soil. To truly test sawdust, side-by-side -side comparisons really tell the story. In one trial bed, fresh sawdust was mixed directly into the soil. Early results showed clear nitrogen deficiency, with yellowed leaves and poor growth. In another bed, sawdust was layered on the surface as mulch with a thin addition of compost beneath. This bed retained moisture well, plants showed no signs of nitrogen hunger, and by season's end, the soil beneath had become richer and darker. A third trial, where sawdust had been pre-composted with manure, produced the best results overall vigorous plants, crumbly soil, and long-lasting fertility. The conclusion is clear. Sawdust can harm when misused, but when paired with nitrogen or composted before application, it becomes a soil healer. The difference is not in the material itself, but in the method of management. Beyond individual beds, sawdust fits into a larger philosophy of soil health, it's abundant, renewable, and honestly often overlooked. Sawmills, carpenters, and even home woodworking projects produce it in quantities that often just go to waste. By reclaiming this material, gardeners close the loop, turning a byproduct into a soil resource. This echoes the deeper principle that soil thrives on diversity. Just as no garden should rely on one crop, no soil should rely on one amendment. Sawdust on its own is incomplete, but when combined with manures, composts, mulches, and cover crops, it becomes part of a living system. Its role is to provide the carbon framework, the long-term structure, while other inputs bring the quick-release nutrients. Together they create soil that doesn't just feed plants, it feeds itself. So, does sawdust mulch heal soil or harm it? The answer is both, depending on how you use it. Left raw and mixed directly into the ground, it can rob plants of the very nutrients they need. But when balanced with nitrogen, aged through composting, or layered thoughtfully as mulch, sawdust becomes one of the most powerful soil-building tools available. It's a reminder that in gardening, there are rarely absolute villains or silver bullets. The secret lies in understanding the material, respecting its strengths, and compensating for its weaknesses. Sawdust is not waste, it's potential. Managed well, it can turn barren beds into thriving ecosystems, just as it did in our test. If you found this deep dive useful, subscribe to Hydrohaven and share it with fellow gardeners. Let's keep uncovering the hidden powers of everyday materials and put them to work in building soils that last for generations.